So yeah, today we're just going to do a quick run through uh, on the setup process for our Tuna 4 motor and this is paired up to our MC8 24 volt uh, control panel for the nice UK brand then. Yeah, so we'll just do a quick introduction to this board. This is the MC8 24 volt panel uh, and this control board here will be common uh, across most of the nice 24 volt uh, motor range. So whether it be our Tuna swing gate ram or l fab underground kit um, it'll be the same board they're used to control those. Um, some of the key things to have a look at here is we've got our 230 coming in, transforms down to 24 volt. Um, we have our encoder connections here. Um, in this case we only have one motor or one leaf. Um, so just ignore that. We're just using encoder 2 then in that case. And again we see our connections here for OGI, electric lock and flashing light. Uh, and then our motor 1, motor 2 connections over here. Again, we're only using one leaf, so just use motor two in this case. Um, we have a connection up here for any additional OVU programming plugins. Um, and then have a look at our inputs here on the left hand side. We have our close, our open, and our step by step, and our stop input, and then our blue bus input as well. And then below that, we have our motor type. So this is a dip switch selector. This is crucial to get this right. Uh, for the initial setup, uh, we will show a reference sheet uh, on how to select the correct uh, dip switch for your motor type. In this case, it is dip switch number three should be marked on and the rest are left off. And then lastly, just our aerial connection then for any long range um, remotes. Yeah, so the first step for this panel uh, will be to do a, perform a hard reset. Uh, just in case anyone has been bench testing this in, in the manufacturing process and left any settings on there. Um, so we'll show you how to do that quickly. So if you look here, we have our open and our close buttons. If you want to press and hold these two together for approximately, I think it's about 5 to 10 seconds. You'll see L1 through to L8 LED flash up a few times. At that point then, that's the board reset. And so its memory has been cleared, uh, ready to program then again. Our second step then um, will be to do a blue bus learn and that is going to learn any connections that are plugged into the board currently. Um, it's advised then when you're setting this up for the first time um, not to have anything connected to the board. Um, in this case we do have our photo cells but we do know these work because um, we have had this running previously. Um, so to perform a blue bus search then it will be a case of holding the open and the stop buttons together for a couple of seconds, so we'll show this now. And you'll see here our L1 and L2 LED begins to flash faster as it's learning. And that is now complete as it's moved over to the L3 and L4 position then, ready for a position search. Step two then, we're just gonna show you how to perform a position search. Um, have a look here, we'll see our L3 and L4 LEDs flashing. That indicates to us that the board is ready to perform a position search. Um, it's advised then to make sure that your gate is in a 45 degree open angle there before we perform this maneuver. Um, to do so just using the, the manual release key as shown previously there. Uh, so now we'll just show you the steps to actually perform this auto learn. So you see here our stop and our close buttons. Just press and hold these together briefly. Uh, L1 LED will now be on flashing and again press and hold or stop and close together. And you'll see, you'll hear the relay click and the auto learn process will begin. Gates will start to close first initially until they meet, meet their limit. They will then begin to open until they reach the limit. As the gates begin to reach their open limit, the final full speed cycle will begin then. Step three then. So now that the gate has learned its limits, uh, we'll just show you how to operate the gate through the panel. Again, just press and hold the open key. Gate will begin to open. Just advise to run through a quick test to make sure everything's operating as, as intended there. Uh, 
and as gate reaches its open limit then just press and hold the close button and it will begin to close again just making sure that that's running through smoothly okay for us So at this point, if you want to add any additional safety devices, uh, such as photo cells or safety edges, um, either using the stop input uh, for resistive edges or a bus input uh, for any nice uh, blue bus photo cells, just again wire these in. And every time you add an accessory then to the board, just make sure to do a blue bus learn. So again, if you were to add these, you know, a secondary set of photo cells, press and hold or open on our stop together. And you see L1, L2 will flash briefly. That will be the board learning uh, any devices that have been connected. At that point then, just ensure we do another test. So try our open cycle and make sure that the gates do open as intended. Okay, step four then. Uh, we're just going to show you how to pair up our nice fob or remote to our OXIBD wireless receiver. And uh, now that we know the gate is fully operational, for a simple process then, you can see here on the OXIBD there's a button. Just press and hold that button until we get the green LED on solid. Okay, now that we've got the LED on solid here, just come over to our remote, press and hold the button until we get three flashes in from the OXIBD. So that should be the remote now paired. We'll wait for the green LED then to disappear and then we can go ahead and test our remote to ensure it is operational.